Hello, today we are walking through a reconstruction of the original Civil War fortifications at Fort Stevens State Park in Warrington, Oregon. It is one of the few remaining coastal forts that defended the West Coast that date back to the American Civil War. Its construction and expansion represent a shift in American military planning as territories came under increasing threat of foreign invasions. It is a simple earthen structure that would soon give way to grander designs as American war planners struggled with a fundamental question. How do you defend a remote territory that's over 14,000 nautical miles from your capital during war? In 1862, the world's geopolitical system was radically different than it is today. The American and British governments had several border disputes, and the British support of the Confederacy during the Civil War led to fears of a direct conflict. As far back as 1844, the U.S. government was concerned about invasion from the British naval forces in Canada. Colonel George Wright, commanding officer of the War Department of Oregon, stated that a single hostile ship could sail up the Columbia River and take the whole frontier. In 1862, during the American Civil War, the Union faced a new threat, the Confederate Navy's Commerce Raiders. These vessels were built overseas, designed to raid commercial ships and posed a threat to undefended frontier ports. At the time, the Union Navy was occupied by the blockade of the Confederacy. It was unable to protect merchant vessels. Sailing from New England to Singapore, the Alabama boarded 450 vessels, captured 65 Union merchant ships, and took more than 2,000 prisoners. The success of the Confederate Raiders Alabama and Shenandoah gave the United States the motivation to make the changes needed to protect the region. Fort Stevens was one of three forts built to defend the mouth of the Columbia River between 1862 and 1865. Funding was approved by Congress in 1862 for the defense of Oregon and Washington Territory at or near the mouth of the Columbia River. On the Washington side of the river, Congress built Fort Columbia and Fort Canby. These three forts with additional batteries provided overlapping fire that would deter any hostile ship from entering the river. The original fort was a simple design that would look at home in medieval Europe. It consisted of a nine-sided fort made from earthen walls surrounded by a moat and a drawbridge. It was armed with 26 guns, including 17 10-inch muzzle-loading Rodman cannons. These were top-of-the-line guns for the day that could fire a 128-pound cannonball over a mile. By 1890, the Civil War-era guns had become obsolete, and Congress authorized the first expansion and modernization of Fort Stevens. The earthworks were modernized and replaced with a battery of two 6-inch rifles on barbat pedal carriages and one 3-inch gun on a pedestal mount. These stood in place until the 1920s. Fort Stevens is one of over 100 coastal forts built to defend American waterways since the Civil War. Many of these were redesigned between 1885 and 1905 under Secretary of War William Endicott. These Endicott-era fortifications were defined by the batteries like those at Fort Stevens, with two or more cannons mounted on disappearing carriages behind concrete fortifications. The $127 million program designed forts that would serve until the end of World War II. The Endicott era improvements saw the completion of eight batteries armed with 10-inch breech-firing rifled cannons. After firing, each cannon would lower behind a concrete embankment to provide protection for the crews when reloading. These guns could fire a massive 617-pound shell up to 9 miles. These were complemented with 6-inch rifled cannons, 10 mortars, and a system that could mine the mouth of the Columbia in case of invasion. The last upgrade made to Fort Stevens was completed during World War II, when two 6-inch guns were added to the western side of the fort that could fire up to 15 miles. Fort Stevens made history on the night of June 21, 1942, when the Japanese submarine I-25 fired several 5-inch shells at the fort. The attack did no significant damage, but it did give Fort Stevens the distinction of being the only installation in the continental United States come under fire from enemy action since the War of 1812. The forts were decommissioned by the U.S. Army after World War II. The guns were removed and the site was turned over to the Oregon Parks and Recreation Department. You can visit the site today, many of the ruins are intact, and you can easily access them. 
Much of the restoration work at Fort Stevens is done and maintained by the friends of the old Fort Stevens. If you want to give them your support, see the link in the description below. If you have any stories that you'd like to share about Fort Stevens or any of the Columbia River forts, please feel free to leave a comment. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe.